Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and welcome to um, a joint episode of um, a chassis sim tutorial and Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. Today, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about a really exciting new development within the chassis sim community called Aeromap Surface Fitting. In particular, and the reason I'm combining it with Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is that I believe that this is such a valuable tool that you can use to understand your race car. It makes perfect sense to actually combine the two of them. Now, let me also add, um, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, usually I would be running a PowerPoint demonstration with um, Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. This time, because I'm going to be flipping back between um, Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner and using Chassis Sam, you'll notice that I've actually um, presenting this as an Adobe PDF. So that way I can just highlight things a little bit better and it should make it clearer for you to understand because we have an awful lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, what we're going to be talking about today is creating aero maps using aero surface fitting with chassis sim. Now, creating aero maps is an absolutely and utterly critical step in understanding your race car. And indeed, I would almost argue that if you don't know what the aero map of your race car looks like, then you're at an extreme disadvantage. Now, this is a topic that I have gone back and forth on in many points of my career. The techniques I've adopted for aero surface fitting have almost, in some respects, almost been like the pursuit of the holy grail. However, over the last couple of months, I'm uh, working with a number of my co working with a number of um, uh, um, of uh, my colleagues in the chassis sim community. I think we've got a really, really good step up that we can talk to uh, that we uh, that we that we that we at chassis sim are incredibly excited about. And we want to share with um, the rest of the race car vehicle dynamics, uh, the the rest of the race car vehicle dynamics community, and in particular, what basically aero surface fitting is is this new feature we've just added to chassis sim. We're going to talk about basically where it's come from and basically the techniques behind it, and then we're going to outline how you can use it. First of all, using one touch aero modeling, and as part of um, the chassis sim aero toolbox. Okay, to understand aero surface fitting, you really do need to understand basically what we're trying to do and basically what the whole idea behind aero surface fitting is. The whole idea of aero surface fitting is what we're doing is basically we're chopping up the aero map into slivers of front ride height and basically we're curve fitting that, uh, that front ride height. So as you can see, basically we've got um, our equation here that basically that either downforce, in this case CLA, CVA or aero balance, basically can be expressed by basically a peak downforce value subtracted by, uh, subtracted by basically a curvature multiplier, which is the A here, minus whatever the delta is from a certain ride height, uh, from what the um, uh, peak value is at a certain um, uh, rear ride height. And this ride height rear peak is basically going to be the value where basically the downforce is basically uh, is basically governed by our CLA peak. So basically what we mean by ride height rear peak is basically that rear ride height where we achieve our maximum value of either downforce, drag or error balance. To illustrate it graphically, what we've got here is take a look at this curve down here. Basically, this is our peak parameter or our CLA peak. This is the right, uh, uh, this is basically the rear right height at which this peak values and our curvature value A basically dictates what the drop off is. And what we get, and basically the, uh, uh, the guts of aero surface fitting is that what we're doing is that we're adjusting our peak parameter, our curvature and our um, uh, rear right height at which the maximum occurs, our right height rear peak, basically as a function of front right height. That's the guts to how basically aero surface fitting um, works. And the reason we've basically done it this way is to basically give you just a really, really, is to give you a really, really tangible way to think about the aero map and basically how to adjust it. Is a, para, is a parabolic fit perfect? 
No, it isn't. There's no such thing as a perfect curve fit. However, the nice thing about parabolic curve fits is the fact that they're relatively is the fact that they're relatively robust. And when we're trying to get our heads around understanding an arrow map, this is actually something that's very very key. Now, as I said, basically, how do we go about using arrow surface fitting? Okay, there are two ways that we can go about using arrow surface fitting. The first is using one touch arrow modeling. Now, basically, you use this. When you've got a brand new race car, you've got no idea what the arrow map looks like, and you've got a single monster file. So basically, the one-touch arrow modeling really comes into the fore when you've got a brand new race car, you don't have a clue what it looks like, and you need a rough and ready approximation of what the arrow ma map looks like. That's basically, and so basically what we've got is we've got some fixed parameters that um, it will go off, it will do the optimization with and get you a rough idea. And that's basically available throughout the chassis sim product range. Alternatively, you can use it as part of the chassis sim arrow modeling toolbox. And basically that's uh, when, uh, that's basically when you've got many of um, the fin slivers of the arrow map to consider and then we can really go in and refine the results. Now, before we get going, I know in a previous video tutorial I've spoken about the importance of getting as many different uh, slivers of the arrow map as you can. Now, that still applies. That absolutely and utterly still applies. However, one of the things that we have found with the arrow surface fitting feature is the fact that it's a very, very, very powerful way of basically getting an arrow map that basically looks sensible straight from uh, uh, that looks sensible straight from uh, the get-go so that's basically how um, uh, that's basically where arrow surface fitting um, uh, uh, fits in and, and indeed as we're going to discuss later arrow surface fitting is going to be a complement to the second order surface fitting that we've used in the past with chassis sim so without further ado let's get started Okay, let's bring up Chassis Sim, and we're going to talk about the first example we're going to give is basically how to use the one touch arrow modeling. Now, as you can see, I've loaded a car file basically that represents a high downforce open wheeler. And what I'm going to do is let's presume that um, we've made a car file that basically matches our setup, and we've got a monster file that we've generated to use the one touch arrow modeling. All we do is basically go to the simulate menu, click on one touch arrow modeling, and that brings up our arrow modeling, um, our one touch arrow modeling parameter box. So basically, we go click here to run one touch arrow modeling. We click here if the dampers are zeroed on the ground, and then we basically import our monster file. It'll just come up saying file process, then we click on OK. Then to, run the, uh, then to run the one touch arrow modeling, we simply click on the start button. I'll just repeat that. I'll click on the start button. Then we click on start simulation. And now it's going through doing a complete arrow surface fit. So it's at this point, you walk away from the computer, you go get yourself a coffee, and then we'll come back when it's done to show you what the end result looks like. Welcome back. Now our, tire, uh, now our arrow um, surface optimization is done for the one touch modeling and you'll see basically it's echoed our result and as you can see here just to apply the results all we do is click on OK, bingo, we've just created our arrow map using one touch um, arrow modeling. Now what that has done is it's basically changed, uh, uh, what it's done is it's basically uh, filled in our pitch, uh, our pitch sensitivity maps, our drag maps, and our arrow balance maps. It's also adjusted basically the maximum CLA and CDA 